How you doing? My name is Mike Rubendahl. I'm from Kings Avenue Tattoo in Long Island, New York. I'm from Long Island, New York. I got started in Long Island where I was born and raised in Massapequa, New York. I started in 1996 with my mentor Frank Romano from Da Vinci Tattoo in Wantaw. I was always into art as a kid. A lot of the music I listened to inspired me as far as their tattoos. I, wanted, I, was, I always looked up to them. They were my kind of idols. They had have. They were heavily tattooed, had large scale work, a lot of Japanese stuff, so I was always drawn to the Japanese art. And uh, yeah, that's about it. That, that kind of started off for me. I was 17 years old when I started apprenticing in 1995. And it was all downhill from there. You know, I fell in love with it and I've been doing it ever, ever since. I do think it does matter how old you are when you start tattooing because I feel as I started when I was 17, so I was I was uh, I was fresher to you know I was more open to ideas. I feel like you develop bad habits if you're an older tattooer, you know. If, and if you know you go to art school, you know they teach you certain aspects of art that that may not apply well and transfer well to tattooing. So I do think it's good you start with a clean slate when you're younger. And, uh, and you'd have an advantage as a tattooer, as a successful tattooer. I would pretty much base my style off of, uh, I would say it's Asian influence. It's not super traditional Japanese, but uh, you know, it's got a, a Western flair to it. Um, I do black and gray realistic. I do, you know, Tibetan style. I do a little bit of American traditional. So I, I, I'm pretty diverse, but I do, I do prefer doing the Japanese style large-scale work and things like that. I feel nowadays Japanese style has become more popular in tattooing uh, just for the fact that people are catching on to the longevity of it. It holds up very well as a, as a tattoo. It stays clean, you know, over the years, over the test of time. You know, you could see it from a block away. It's just very powerful. It's a it's powerful imagery and um, as far as perfecting it, I don't think I don't think we nowadays could ever perfect it. It was done correct years ago and, and that's what we try to emulate, you know, tattoos that were done hundreds of years ago and I still in my work, I don't feel like I capture that look yet, and I, I strive to get that look. But you know, as far as I'm concerned, that's that's the way it should be. You know, that's the way it should look. It should be done correctly, and it should be you know that that part of it should be respected. You know, we all do the same subject matter, but there's so many different ways to do it. So there's no you know, it's it's endless. It's endless. There's so many variables, and you make it different every time. You know, it's, it's it takes on its own new life every time you do a tattoo. My advice to any upcoming tattoo artist, I, you know, at this point, I don't, I don't know what to say anymore. Just because they're, it's a whole new breed and a whole new generation. So I was brought up back in the day. You know, it was a protected trade. Um, information wasn't easily accessible like it is now. So you know, they, every, they have all the information they need between the magazines, the internet, you know, television. So. You know, there's no more secrets. It's it's um, it's not a closed trade anymore. So I don't have too much advice because they, you know, they have all the information they need. And I would just say, you know, respect history of it and cherish it because I feel like we're we're all lucky, you know, to be tattoo artists. It's a good life, and you know, it should it should be uh, cherished. Uh -huh.